No Offence But, where we discuss the uncomfortable topics, drop the truth bombs and have the raw and real conversations that make you feel socially acceptable. Guys, if you've enjoyed listening, please ensure you give us a follow and if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe for more updates. Like, are you prepared for this one? Are you mm. ready? Yeah. Today's a bit of a sweaty conversation, I feel. And it's fucking hot as shit. And it's <laughs> it's really hot, so if you see us getting a shine on our faces, mind you. Maybe we should here. get some tissues. We do actually need some tissues because I've noticed in season one we cry a lot, whether yeah. it's happy or for sad. <laughs> um but hey, there's nothing wrong with a bit of emotion. But yeah, instead of Queen doing the toilet run, we should definitely <laughs> yeah. have like a nice I'll get like a nice aesthetic box for our Kleenex. Yeah. Get like the high grade stuff. Yeah, we got a... And yeah, we can pop it on our little our little marble table over there. Yeah. All suave. I'm just I'm still obsessed with the glow up. It looks insane. I just I feel so relaxed coming in here. I just actually enjoy I feel like I'm just coming for a catch up with the girls. Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. I feel you girl. I'm loving the glow up. It's so relaxed, such a good vibe. Um I'm just like, why didn't we think of this sooner? Why was this not the look? It's so amazing where our mind goes and where we started and how it's developed. Do you know what it is? We're in the game now. Like, yeah. at first, you didn't know if anyone was going to drop out. I mean, there was, but obviously. But you just don't know where it's going to go, whether we're just like, Do you know what? And it might be shit. After five episodes. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Everyone listens. But we're like, no, we're in it now. We're in. like, we're in for the long game. We so. have a whole gang. Like, we're we in. do. We Got do, now. and I'm loving the guests as well that we're speaking with. Yeah, the guests are fire. The guests are fire. Some of them are going to be episodes you're going to hear later after this, mm. and yeah, and so far so good. So, let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is a really, really big one. It's a bit of a sensitive topic today. Um, for do you know what, some people that are going to be listening because they're going to be able to relate to a situation, maybe not to this level, but could have had a similar scenario or situation but mm. also our main girl Lacey we are talking today about um her sex tape which unfortunately came out god it must have been it was 2017 17. and we were on a flight back from Cape Town mm. different flights to you yeah we're... and I remember landing and just getting a text and it was like holes my sex tape's been leaked yeah and that was the start yeah so take us back to how it started yeah so it's been this great holiday from cape town um do you know i haven't yeah obviously i haven't spoke about this in a really long time i have like recently because i've been doing a lot of inner work so it has come up and i feel like i've accepted it a lot which is why i can talk about it now like, I always thought, oh, I wouldn't cry, but I'm starting to feel a bit emotional. But I don't know if it's, like, day one of my period, so... Yeah, but it's okay if you bear do. Bear with me. Um, so, I was on a flight, and I had Wi-Fi on the flight. And people kept sending me really weird pictures. And I was like, how are they getting these pictures? They superimpose. Like, what's happening? I don't really understand. And... Um, weird pictures of you. So, the way they're obviously like taking a screenshot. Yeah, screenshots uh, of the tape. Sure. It's like in sexual stuff. And I'm like, freaking out. So, I messaged a few people back home. Because obviously, my signal's in and out. I'm like, hey, like, what's happening? Like, I'm getting this weird shit. Like, can you investigate? So, then I stop off in um, Dubai. So, I go from Cape Town to Dubai. Probably, like, the worst place to stop. Like, getting all these messages coming. Mm. Like, well, if they check my phone, am I going to yeah. get arrested? yeah. Um, and then, um, my friend messages me and he's like, oh my God, I'm actually going to cry. It's <laughs> okay, like, babe. Oh my God, I did not think I'd cry. Babe, it's a lot. He's like, it's like, Lace, I'm really sorry, but the pictures have come from a tape of you and your boy your ex-boyfriend and it's going to be released in the morning by the time you land and there's nothing we can do about it jeez <laughs> i know and then you just stuck mid-air you're stuck on a plane it was actually i think that was a, i think i was um just landed in dubai 
think my signal was out again, so I landed in Dubai, because I think we were obviously landing, so I didn't have any signal, I think they turned it off, so I landed in Dubai, I find out, so then I've got to like, try be normal, because I'm with my brother, I'm with loads of my work people, I've got to try like, cover this shit, and know that this is coming by the time I land, get on my next flight and land, it's going to start spreading like wildfire, and get on the flight and I'm sitting there and as soon as I can get out of my seat because I'm sitting next to my brother I'm like the anxiety yeah. is like taking over and I'm freaking out and I literally go to the back of the plane to the flight attendants and I'm just like get me out like I want to jump off the plane like I don't want to be here please just open the door <laughs> literally was ready just to no, throw myself point, out you're just your world has literally crumbled and you can't even talk to your brother about this no there's no I mean, you one you could but you're just not in that place where you've even had a chance to process it right I had no time I'm freaking out and then um yes I'm at the back and the flight attendants are so sweet they're like this happened to Kim K and look how famous she is. Like, I don't want to be Kim K. <laughs> like, they were just trying to make me feel better. And I was just like, I was in shock. Like, I could not believe it because the craziest thing is, because I did modeling, a glamour modeling, my biggest fear was someone seeing my vagina. Like, there's one part of me that no one's seen and it was fucking out there for everyone to see. And um, I have to sit the whole plane they're so sweet they just give me drinks and food and let me sit there one of our work colleagues was on my flight as well and I tell her because I just need someone to speak to her. I'm freaking out yeah. I'm freaking out so then I land and we have to get all the way from like the furthest airport I don't know where it was but it felt like forever and I'm mm. freaking out at this point like I'm being ratty but everyone's thinking she had an 18 hour flight I'm like no a fucking sex day was dropped on me like no one knows and then I um have to go home to drop my stuff off and um I think I locked myself in the house. It was all so manic. So I'm like really stressed. And I'm so stressed because I've got to go. It's in the morning. It's probably like 10 o'clock. And I have to go and tell my current boyfriend who I was so in love with. There's been a sex tape released of me. And I want to tell him before anyone else does because I know it's about to go out. as well, yeah. So I have to rush, get to his house. And I'm just sitting on his bed and I'm just like, can't even like get it out. And he's like, what, are you pregnant? Like, what, what's yeah. happened? And I'm like, there's a sex tape been released of me. <laughs> and it just like, he was so upset. And he was like, I'm just so upset there's nothing I can do to help yeah. you. And I was just so upset. And it was like the worst day of my life, for sure. Like, I don't think I've ever had a worse day than that. <laughs> so it starts going wild around town. Um, yeah, like one person finds it and gets sent and sent and sent. It got sent to my boyfriend. It did? Oh, okay. Yeah, and he was like, why the fuck are you sending me this? And I'm like, oh, my bad. But like everyone's sending it around and it's like, this is one of my worst moments of my life and people are like laughing and sending it around yeah. and like yeah. promoting it. It was just like, shit, it's crazy speaking about it because you're like, whoa, it was such a hard time of my life. <laughs> And so, initial, my initial reaction when I was like, you're fucking ex. You yeah. always think it's the ex, well, right? Well, I was messaging him on the plane, actually. Right. I got his number. I don't think he even had his number. But I somehow got his number. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this has happened. Rah, rah, rah. Like, have you put this out? And yeah. he's just like, was it me? It wasn't me. It wasn't me. And I don't know how I found out about this. I think, actually, I found out because all the press then starts to message me and ring me. There'd been a crazy hacking scandal. And they hacked like major celebrities. Like I can't mm -hmm. remember who else was involved because obviously at that point in my life, I was just focusing on me yeah. and blocking everything yeah. else out. And they wanted interviews and stuff from me. So what had actually happened was he was on my Apple ID and um, on his own phone. He was recording in the beginning of the video. I've never watched it. Holly, you have. I have, of course. Mm. As beginning a good friend. <laughs> Thanks, babe. You you told look, me the I other think day. you look great, to be fair. Thanks. Because you, you did a great I job. I know it wasn't my like best sex because I didn't actually want to be with him. I was just doing it because I was just like we were, we'd pretty much broken up and I was just scared and didn't want to be alone and we lived together and something. You know, I just was a bit of a mess as a kid. Um, well, I would fuck you after that. So oh, thank yeah. you. Oh, that was a great job. Babe. Yeah. I've not seen it. Do you know what the thing is as well? Like. I always said I'd never make a sex tape unless I was married. That's the level of trust I wanted. So I think mm. I was really upset that I had done that. But this is the thing. I didn't, in the beginning, I'm like, no, don't record, don't record, apparently. Uh. So um, 
I didn't actually know he was recording the whole way, you know? Like, I didn't, I'd asked for it not to be. So it was like one of these things that's like, I didn't want my vagina being shown. I didn't want to do this before I was married. And now it's fucking all done and out to the world. Mm. And um, yeah, so I'm going in at him and obviously thinking it was him. But yeah, it was a hacker that had hacked my iClouds, which obviously I, it wasn't on my phone. So I didn't know about this video. Shit. So I'm so confused. I'm like, where are these images coming from? How the fuck? Like, is someone spying on me? Like, I was so confused. Yeah. And oh, then, God. um, yeah. And then, um, yeah, that, and what had happened before was that my Apple ID kept like signing me out. So I kept signing back in, signing back in. And my boyfriend at the time was like, you need to change your email. And I wish I'd told him sooner because he's like such a genius at stuff. Whereas I'm just not very good with technical stuff. Like I definitely am better now from that. But, um, so I changed my email and that was okay, but it was too late. Where I'd kept typing in my password over and over, they, they kept getting it. it. Uh. Yeah, they were, they were encrypting it. And that was happening for a while. I can't remember how long, but it was quite a long time. So I was like, why does this keep happening? It was so weird. Um, so yeah, I got hacked and that's how it came out. It's mental because you just, you think of Apple as like super safe. And now I'm thinking, like, oh my God, they're encrypting it. And I'm thinking of times of where I've had to re put in my Apple ID and password. And now I'm like. And it makes you a bit suspicious, doesn't it? This is why I'm like, <sighs> in, yeah, security is such a big point. Like I had, my password was Lacey123. Like, oh, oh so my ridiculous. God. So babe. I know, I've had it since I was like 15. It's like now I do really cryptic passwords. Like I have different passwords. I'm always changing them. Like yeah. it's so like key to having the internet security. So yeah, that's the story. So after that happened, I remember you straight onto like lawyers, legal. You were trying to get them to take it down from all of the websites and stuff. And I feel like you spent a lot of money just chasing that. Which, on reflection now, do you kind of wish you just would have let bygones be bygones and like that? it's out like Let's I totally understand for wanting to protect yourself and thinking yeah. you can pull it completely no I had to do like whatever it took to feel like I was doing something because otherwise mm. you're sitting there and you're just like this is happening to me and there's like nothing I can do you almost feel like you you didn't want to just give up on it yeah like it was that I would probably kill myself like sitting there thinking about it all the time it was like I needed to know I was doing something <laughs> Did you um, get to that point of where you was like, I could actually kill myself? Well, like, you have to think people are messaging me on social media, like, you're a hoe and you're making money off this and, like, just being so nasty. And you're like, this is literally the worst time of my life. I really don't need you messaging me this right now. Like, I'm literally trying not to hang myself with my fucking light in my living room or drive into the river because I literally lived opposite a river. And I just remember, like, I couldn't speak to anyone. Like, I just was alone in my house because I just, like... I didn't want to be around anyone. I didn't want to be around my boyfriend because I was like, I felt like it was just like it was just a really awkward situation to be. And I feel like now I'm a bit older, it'll probably be a bit different. But what was I like, 25 at the time? Young, mm. young. Really young. And you have to think, I don't have my mum and dad around. It's mm. not like I could just ring my mum and be like, Mum, help. Like, mm. I had no one. And we hadn't been together that long, me and my boyfriend, maybe like a year. So, like, I was scared he was going to leave me and I loved him so much. Like, I, I loved him so much. Like, you knew our relationship was amazing. Yeah. We had the best relationship. We were best friends. And, yeah, so I remember, like, after a few days, I said to him, look, please, can we just get away for a few days? So we went to the spa and we relaxed and whatever. And you know what? I was so down, but I was just, like, surprisingly, I was actually kind of coping, okay? But I wasn't coping. I was just trying to yeah, block it to out. Forget. And then um, I remember we went for dinner. And you know, one thing I noticed like in really bad times is that laughter is your best therapy. Like I've noticed now, like if I can laugh, I can still live. Like mm. if you can laugh, you can like keep continuing. Um, but we went for dinner at this restaurant. It's funny, my friend lives there now, so I drive past it often. It was like one of my best memories because I'm sitting there and I'm literally telling him like, I want to kill myself. I feel so violated. I feel like I'm just being fucked from everyone. Like people are seeing such intimate things with me. Like I can't tell you how awful this feels. Mm. And the lady comes over, she's like, what drink do you want? I'm like, porn star martini. And I just went, ah, and just start <laughs> laughing. I'm like on the floor dying. He's just looking at me. And that was the first time I'd laughed in like a week. And, and I laughed at the situation so early as well. Like, good for you. For yeah, I didn't feel like I could ever laugh again because I was yeah. so depressed and so down. Yeah. I didn't think I could ever be happy again. Oh. And I did. And from that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, I was a bit of healing. I was like, you can make this through. You mm. can make it through. Um, and you know what? 
God bless to the guy I was with. He was so amazing. And I really wish like I could see it from the perspective I see it now because I feel like that was a massive breakdown of our relationship in the end because I just no longer was myself. So you feel like that's what kind of made things change in how you had that relationship, how it progressed and then the eventual... When I tell Downfall. you my relationship was amazing, my relationship was amazing. Like mm. we were best friends, we hung out all the time. We were just, it was so great. From that moment, our relationship just started to deteriorate. It wasn't actually really like that quick of a deterioration. I'd only notice it now looking back. But it was like, I no longer was the person he fell in love with anymore. I became this new person that not even I knew. I didn't know who I was because what I feel happened was that I disconnected so far from my body and myself because I was so sh ashamed of what had happened that I just couldn't like be in it or face it. Mm -hmm. And it's so sad because all I was doing was having sex mm. and I got with made somebody to feel you loved. Do you know what I mean? It was, was in a, a relationship. We lived it, together. It's not like a one it was a night personal, stand. Or... Yeah, it was a real personal thing. And like because of society making us feel like you have to be this certain way or you know you're n weird if you do this or you're a dick if you do like you know just Making having judgment dirty for stuff that's supposed to be fun and pleasurable yeah because of that perception that I now held because I cared about what other people thought so much that ruined end up ruining not ruining my life but it really has had a huge implication on where my life is at today and I, I mean my life's in a really great place today and I'm really grateful but I mean I've had to be on a healing journey for what? How long has that been? Five years? And the rest. I feel like the maybe the hardest part of that was, like you said, it was rife in Bedford. It was really fucking bad for you. And I think, like you said, you received such a shitty message of like, oh, you're making money from this. And it's like, you're never going to... Me knowing you, you're not the person that would go on social media and like share your side of the story. It's just not you. It's not people's business. So that must have been like a really frustrating part of like, and probably still today, people would probably think, oh yeah, Lacey released that on yeah. herself to make money, right? Mm. Yeah. And Little did they know judgment. I'm spending thousands every month trying to get it down. And yeah. the problem is once people download it, they'll just keep re-uploading it. So I was literally spending thousands of pounds for no reason. Because like it, was it was just getting re-uploaded. Yeah, like, but I'm like, how do the Kardashians get their pictures down and blunt them without Yeah, but they have like on. deals with actual media and- Yeah, yeah. like, and I'm like, I couldn't so get much. a whole tape down, but. Fucking Chloe Kardashian get a picture done where it wasn't edited. I was like, that's bullshit. I oh, know. <laughs> so you've just mentioned about your partner, and I think this is just a, a totally normal reaction is because it's of you, like the focus is all you. The focus is like, how am I going to overcome this? How am I going to get through it and stop it? So I don't think, I don't know, I'm just speaking from my headspace, was there ever a point where you even thought of him and how he was feeling at, at any point? Because I think if it was me, I just wouldn't. I'd be so focused on myself and just getting through mm. day to day. I think, like, looking back, I didn't. But, like, I couldn't speak about it for about three years. To him? Mm. So neither of you were discussing it, having conversations? No, and I think that's the first thing I did that went wrong. Okay. So he would have probably had, he probably would have felt angry for you. He would have felt helpless because as a man, when you're in a relationship with your woman and someone disrespects her in any way, shape or form, absolutely your gut reaction is, I need to protect my partner. Mm. He wouldn't have been able to do any of that completely okay. and utterly on the outside, out of control for him. And to make matters worse, you guys weren't then talking about it. I that really pushed him away because yeah. I couldn't, like, I couldn't face speaking about it. Like, I just couldn't. Like, it was something that was so hurtful and just so, like, it was just awful. Like, I couldn't speak about it even to, I didn't speak about it to anyone for years. And do you know what the one yeah. thing with him I'll never forget? It's crazy looking back now because you're like, wow, like, how did we break up? Like, I obviously see how, but... Mm. Like the love we had for each other was so great. I remember we went into a town, like in my local town, and we were grouping, walking through a group of guys. And obviously you knew these guys would have seen it. And he literally grabbed my hand and just held it mm. as we walked through. And I never forget that. Like it was so lovely to like have that. And yeah, 
I can see now though, like obviously I just wasn't the same person anymore. Like I became this, I didn't even know who I was anymore. I honestly have only just found myself like 10 months ago again. If you, mm. Even with us, like, I'm just trying to think back from, obviously we were on like new skin, we were doing the success trips, we were going out all the time with the girls in Bedford, we were having great nights out and then it's literally, I just feel like I never saw you. And then I don't think I ever saw you out in Bedford. I don't think you've even been out in Bedford since. I have a few times, but like very rarely, like years later yeah. as well. Yeah, I didn't go out in Bedford after I like. And then that's when it was the downhill spiral of your mental health for sure. Yeah. It's definitely been the catalyst for it, would you say, for the majority of it? I think like, yeah. Yeah, I had mental health issues before because of my childhood for sure. But like... I could manage that and it was quite okay because mm. I was like, I I moved out when I was 15. So I had like a good 10 years to process all of that stuff. And I did do therapy and stuff. But so I don't think that was actually the really, the big thing that really blew me up was this tape. Mm. And it's interesting. So obviously you've only met me afterwards. Yeah, I had no oh, idea. Yeah. yeah, but you obviously knew me before. So yeah. it's really interesting to see the different people. But even myself, like I didn't even know like what music I liked anymore. Or like, I just didn't have a personality anymore because I was so distant and so disconnected from myself. I didn't know who I was. I would like not like to go meet people now because I thought that they'd either know or like, you know, I just thought I was ugly or disgusting or shameful. So I wouldn't want to go meet people. I'd start getting anxiety like going to meet people. So I didn't want to like go out with my boyfriend that much anymore. Like it just, oh, and then I fell pregnant really soon after. So imagine like going through all this crazy stuff and then I fall pregnant, it was a complete surprise and then I'm going into motherhood. So it was like mm. another thing just to take my mind off of it, and that means I just didn't deal with it even more. So all the problems that are starting to arise in our relationship, we now added a baby into that. Yeah. So it was like bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm even less of myself now, having a baby. I still don't know, even yeah. further away from my identity. Mm. It was really intense, I'd say like, yeah, a good four and a half years of a really dark period of my life. Dark. When you found out you were pregnant, obviously that you said that it would be it was a nice distraction to make you not think about it. But then did you not get paranoid and start to think, oh my god, what if when she's older she sees it and do you still think about that now? No, I'm actually really good with that. Like I would tell Mabs hundred percent have that conversation. Like, fuck. It's actually so weird to be like have to have that conversation with my yeah. kid. It's like crazy, I think, because I haven't cried about it in a really long time. But Why have you got emotional over that? Do you feel... I think it's just the realisation, like, because it's so long ago and I've healed so much from it, but speaking about it now, because it's not something we talk about. Yeah, of course. Like, so in-depthly anyway. Um, Speaking about it now, it's like, shit, that really happened. Mm. And you have to dive back into it sometimes and recognize it happened when I'm going to go talk to my daughter. So mm. all them old feelings kind of come back of yeah. what you felt at the time. I and you know what's what so fucked up? Whoever did that hacking has long moved on. Yeah. They could even be dead. Their <laughs> life would have been completely Their day -day. untouched. Yeah. yeah. They and carry on as normal ruined. and they've literally left a fucking shit storm in the wake because they wanted to hack a few celebrities and make a bit of money. Make a little bit of money. It's actually so disgusting. Yeah. That's why did, did you ever try and find out who the hacker was? I mean, it's probably like looking for a needle in a haystack, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, was there like any way you could investigate that? I have no idea. Obviously lawyers were looking into it, but it was just no, it was just a dead there was like they're just like you're doing all this stuff, you're trying to throw this money at this situation yeah. and I spent a lot of money and it was just like it's nothing we can do. It's nothing we can it's do. It's a pit of money eventually, isn't it? Yeah, and in the end, it felt good. I think it was maybe after six months. I was just like... I You're need kidding. To stop. This went on for months. You trying? Long. Yeah. After about six, six months, months. Wow. I was like, okay, I need to stop this now and let it go. And that point of letting it go really helped me let... Because I was like, I was like, I'm keeping the energy up by mm. being involved in this mm -hmm. and keeping it alive. So I had to let it go. And it's really sad though, because I look back now, I'm like, that destroyed my life four and a half years. I really believe everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Like I really do. But you know, like looking now, I mean, I speak about it here. It's like, I wish I never let that destroy my life for so long. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, but honestly, I would go to therapists 
I mean, this is when I started spending thousands on my mental health, like crazy amounts of money. And I'd go to so many different people like, this has happened, can you help me? This has happened, can you help me? Like, I could not let go of it. And they'd just be like, in the end, like, you just have to get over it. It's just such a shit way of trying to help somebody deal with that. I mean, it, there isn't a lot you can do. Let's be honest, let's face the facts. Yeah. But imagine, like, you're in a space. Usually if something's going on in your life, you're breaking up mm. or you're, I don't know, something horrendous, like your child's died or something. Like, yeah. you've, there's someone you can go to and speak to and they can relate to you. There's no sex tape helpline <laughs> it's like yeah. no Can't yeah there's no there one i could ring or i was i was researching you know the only person that helped me was jennifer lawrence she had things where like pictures and stuff had come out of her that were really inappropriate and obviously you have to think guys oh, your yeah. family now knows about this your mum knows your dad knows your brothers know How their friends are talking about it brothers? like you're exposed yeah obviously my brother was like you're being mental that morning i was on the getting from the plane and then afterwards, he obviously a bit later on realizes right. he probably had to sleep, woke up, sees it all because mm. he everyone knows. Mm -hmm. And he messaged me, he's like, "I'm so sorry, this is happening to you." Yeah, I was like, wondering. my family was so nice. I don't know if I heard from my mum and dad. Maybe I did from my dad, but I don't remember hearing from my mum. I don't remember if she did. I don't remember. We, obviously, I wasn't speaking to her at the time, so it wasn't like it's someone such had... a difficult thing as well. Like with brothers do you know what I mean well, it's also you don't want to hear your dad being age. like talking yeah. about your sex day <laughs> like, yeah, it's just no. like this is not a conversation I want to have yeah but I remember my auntie messaging me and like my cousins are being like look we love you we're so sorry and I think like that was really nice to have that but yeah like, because I think culturally awful. it could have gone the opposite couldn't it? Yeah, yeah it do really you know, I'm could've. really fortunate because my family, obviously they're, they're first generation in this country, like my aunties and uncles. So they already broke all these rules and did all this kind of stuff. Maybe not what I said. <laughs> not already, that extreme. <laughs> I'd already been modeling and doing like glamour modeling. Yeah, so, so they were already like woke to it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and they were already accepting. So they were like, look, our family's disowned us for doing these kind of things or doing this or way less worse things. Yeah. Mm. Um, so they would never, because they'd already been disowned and stuff, they wouldn't do it to me. But it's not just something like, you can't just go to your family and be like, I'm really upset by sex. Like, you're so full of shame. There's just no one, you, you're just, I was trapped in my head and just stuck. And so yeah, I went to all these therapies and I obviously read up about Jennifer Lawrence. That helped a bit because it was the one person I could like, but she didn't do that much of an interview on it. So I'm like reading her mm. articles over and over. And the one thing that helps, so guys, I think I lived with this for so many years. When I went to Ayahuasca in August last year, she was like, why are you here? I was like, I don't know. I feel I've been called to come. And weirdly, I found out about Ayahuasca. I think it came back to me in August, 2017, like six months after the tape. And they were talking about it on this table and I just remembered like that must have been the first place I heard of it. I never researched ayahuasca. I just felt this calling that I needed to go. So I get there. I'm in the jungle, flown there all by myself. Don't know what the fuck I'm getting into. <laughs> I don't even know what ayahuasca really is. I'm just like, I need like, because at I this point I've exhausted every, yeah. I've exhausted everything. I'm like. Time to bring in the big guns at this point. Yeah. yeah. She's like, why are you here? And I was like, I don't know. I've just been called. She was like, there has to be a reason. I just went, there's a tape that come out. It's ruined my life. It's ruined my relationship. And all of that. And I, mm. I just cried and I was like, whoa, I'm still really controlled by this. That I underlying root was there. Yeah. And that was August, 2022. Like, Five years later, and I still didn't realize how much. I did realize it was having an effect, but it's at a point where you're like, I know this is affecting me. Someone help me, someone help me, and no one can help you. No one can help you, yeah. No one can help you. So you're just like, well, I've just got to learn to live with this now. So can I ask, have you had the chat with the boyfriend that you were in a relationship around this? We have, because there was a point where I needed to speak to him in 2020, I think it was, um, because I lost myself so much that I wanted to speak to him, be like, who was the person that was before this? Because I do not remember her. And it was really sad because he was like, he was so stuck. She was so amazing. And like, she'd never let anything get her down. Mm. Like, she'd fight for whatever she believed in. And she'd just always commit to stuff and make it work. And I just wasn't that person anymore. You were all. probably listening, like, who the hell are you describing? Yeah, because that's not me. Yeah, and it was nice because you're like, oh my God, I used to be like that. And it, I remember because I have things in my life that reflect it. Like I had a really great business and I had really great memories and I traveled so much. But it wasn't me anymore. And it was like so hard because I still was that person somewhere. And I wanted to 
create new things like a podcast and do all the things that I'm doing now, build new businesses. But imagine for four and a half years, guys, you wanna be creative and do all this stuff that you love doing. You've always been this way and not being able to do it anymore because you're so much in shame and pain. that Fear like judgment. Yeah, you yeah. don't wanna put yourself out there. I didn't wanna mm-hmm. post online. Like I didn't wanna like put myself out there because I just felt everyone was judging me. And it was awful. It was literally like being in fucking prison. Like, yeah. but just in daily life. And you know what the worst thing was? I said this to you when I got back from ayahuasca and I said sorry to my friends. Cause I was like, I couldn't be friends with you guys anymore because I was happy for you guys and your lives were moving on, but low key, I was just like, they're being able to move on and be happy. And I just feel like I'm not a hundred percent happy for you because I'm still stuck here and I don't know how to get out of it. Mm. And you just didn't feel like a great friend because you're like, I am happy for you. I really am. But I can't be like, there was like a a part of like jealousy or envy or something. It's just like, I can't be a hundred percent happy for you because I'm so in my pain and stuck here and I don't know how to get out that like, for how level of pain I am, I physically can't be that happy for you. Mm. And I had to, I owned it to you guys and I was just like, I yeah, noticed no, this did. and did. that's we, why I've been so distant. We knew you were in a bad place, for sure. Like, mm. I think it got to a point where you just kept pulling yourself away from events and business and socials and eventually WhatsApp chats, you know, the point where you don't even have to face people, just getting involved in chats and stuff. And then it's like, she's not good. Yeah, it was weird because it was like, obviously my business was all online and I used Mm. to love being online and inspiring people and putting things out. Like, I really love that. And then all of a sudden you're like, I don't want to be online anymore. I don't want people to see me. When it first happened, obviously you would have shut yourself off from the world. You didn't post. Can you remember how long it was from when you stopped posting to when you finally got brave enough again? Was it like a year I remember posting very soon after, like this probably the post is still on my thing where I was at the spa that, that week because I was like, I need to just try to be normal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was like, before I used to post and it would be really like, you know, just what I felt or wanted to post, it was me. Now I'm trying to post and I don't know who I am anymore. So it's just becoming less and less posting in the end. It was like I was trying to, trying to, trying to and then I just wouldn't post because for one, I'm miserable and I've got nothing to say and for two, I don't know what to say anymore. I have no idea, like, was not authentic. Meanwhile, you're creating these stories in your head thinking, well, people are probably thinking, why is she posting? And she's, yeah. Mm. Well, it's just well, weird because it's like, at this point, it's not even what other people think anymore. It's what I think about myself. Right. I've now created this opinion of myself. And it's not even even that. It's like, I've just had this huge block put up and I didn't know how to fight it through. And I hope like someone on this call might have experienced something that's been so traumatic or they're at a point in their life where like, I don't understand why I feel like this or how to get out of it. So I think a lot of people will be able to relate to that. Mm. And that was me. And my only advice to anyone out there that's like in a space that's really, really rough and they're not happy or they just feel like it's never going to end is that you just can't give up. And I mean like, my whole life has been like torn apart. Like I feel like I've lost everything and had to rebuild everything back up a few times. Mm -hmm. And you know, the one thing I didn't do is I didn't stop fighting even when I was in bed every day and couldn't get out. And Mm. I actually got really sick. Um, So I see a homeopath since September, I've been seeing a homeopath. And she said to me, she was like, how are you surviving on a day to day basis? And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, you've just got, you must have no energy. Like your sleeping pattern's awful. Like your body is breaking, shutting down. Because what happened was since the tape, I think I've had experienced a lot of trauma in my life, but that tape was the catalyst of trauma that threw my body completely out. So what happened was I was deteriorating and I could see myself. I used to say this to my partner, I'd be like, I'm getting worse and worse and I don't know what's happened to me, but I can look back and I'm not the person, I'm getting further and further away from me. Every week I'm waking up, I'm further away from me. It was, so, imagine it's so scary. Was that mentally to wake and up. physically? Dude, I'm looking in the mirror, I can't even see myself anymore. Like I'm only just starting to see myself now again. I couldn't see Lacey, I didn't know who Lacey was. I didn't, I was a shell, like empty. Mm. Just this random thing walking around, I didn't know anything. And she said to me, she was just like, how are you surviving? And I was like, I can't wake up before 10. Like, I can't take my daughter to school. It's really affecting my daily life. Like, I can't sleep at night. 
it was so crazy and she was like you are literally yeah like really not in a good way so for the last 10 months I've really been healing my body and that's why people were like you're so happy now I'm like guys yeah. I have committed and done everything I can I've tried every single healing modality you can because this is the thing you can get knocked down but you've got to get back up like and I don't care if you need a month in bed or a week in bed or even if you keep getting up and you keep getting knocked back down like I was like kept going kept going doors 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 mm. blocks blocks but five years if, even if it took me fucking 20 years like 20 years at least I can then start to live my life because I look at this now and yeah it's five years wasted out of 30 that's a sixth of my life guys wasted but in a hundred years, it's going to be 5%. And this is going to be such a small amount. And that 5% has made me the person I am now. Mm. And I absolutely love the person I am now. Like I'm, this experience has made me so compassionate about other people. I never judge any other people now. Like I'm just such a different person. Yeah. But also like I've reignited, like I'm even more strong now. Cause I'm like, you know, I've overcome this. There's nothing anyone can throw at me that I cannot overcome. And I believe, guys, I promise you, I sound mental, even the conversation I had with you earlier, Holly. <laughs> there is nothing I don't believe I cannot get. Mm -hmm. Even when the odds are stacked against me, at this point, only where I'm at now, I was not here like 10 months ago or a year ago. At this point right now, even when it looks like I'm being crazy, it's out of my reality, I promise you, I will get what I want. Like I have that level of belief in myself. So what to take five years to be depressed and be in the worst place ever to now be in like one of the best places in my life is it worth it like I'm not sure mm. <laughs> but for me like I think you just have to make the best out of every situation and I mean life's gonna fucking tear you apart at times mm -hmm. you're gonna feel like I can't cope I can't get out of bed I want to kill myself like I literally wanted to kill myself guys it's not a joke like it was so and then I started getting anxiety like all these things I've never experienced but the anxiety only started in 2021 it's four years on of yeah. this issue the built up the mental like trauma and, and it started to get new avenues yourself. to it yeah another thing the homeopath said to me she was like you can't manage stress you must like attack people all the time and I started to see that I was getting very attacking I was like I'm not usually like this like what's happening but mm -hmm. it was my body my chemicals had become imbalanced my body had started to break down it was just trying to cope every single day I was exhausted all the time I had no energy so I couldn't come and do stuff like this people mm. were like you guys just like why are you always cancelling because my body was honestly flat out exhausted yeah. all that like no one understands because they couldn't relate mm. but I, I, I was dying in front of me it was so scary to see it now and witness it the other side mm. so I know you were saying like when it all happened you got, you shut yourself away you didn't want to speak to anyone you didn't want to have any comms so I got two questions really looking back because you're now a stronger better version of yourself a do you wish you reacted differently do you wish you'd done that I didn't do this myself post and really explained your side of the story to try and rein it in and if it happened again how would you handle that because I think there's just I'm so I'm so fiercely defensive of myself mm. I can't imagine what it must be like to think that people are putting all these fake stories out and then you've got to hold that in yeah I wouldn't have been able to hold it in mm. But then I'm not. I've not been in that position as well. Equally, yeah. I think it's easy think to say that you'd go out there, but you know that you'd get the heat back. I think it's also like imagine how exposed you've been that your whole body and in most intimate self is out there, not by choice. It's out yeah. there. Like for one, you. The thing is, guys. If I knew, if I prepped this sex tape and it was one that I was gonna make that was planned and that was like I looked fit and I was putting my best game in, like this was my worst game. So like. For one, you're like, this is really humiliating. If it was that level of sex tape, I probably would have been cool with it. I'd have been like, yeah, I own it. I look, I look great. sick. Like, yeah. But already I'm like, I don't know. Well, I didn't know if I look good, but I'm like, I didn't know it was happening, so I probably mm. didn't look good. And I remember the day that it was, I can see it. Like, I obviously remember it happening now. And it was like, we'd just broken up and I was like, just trying to get him back or whatever. Like, it just, and I wasn't in love with him. Like, desperate it just wasn't, place. yeah, I was in a desperate place. So like, yeah, if it was that, I probably would have done that to be yeah. fair. But like I love that you asked that question because I wish now like I've never thought about it but if it was to go back 100% I would have just went on live on Instagram Facebook and been like this has happened yep 
fuck you all if you think I put it out. No, I'm not making any money. I'm going to have to go to solicitors now and try get this down, but enjoy it at your own pleasure if you must feel the need. Mm. Please, if do not humiliate me and do not watch it because that would be great, but just, and I'd just yeah, probably put it out and make thing. a late part, like, I think. Yeah. Actually, if you would never have messaged me, like I would never have known about it. Do you not but, reckon? Did no one tell you? No, no, wow. nobody ever messaged me about it. I do think it was like a select group of people like that boy network and your school network like it's I was just worried because obviously isn't like it? we work together that like someone would have told you from no, other circles no I know. never received an email or anything like that or a text nothing um so I would never have known about it and that's the thing if you go onto your socials and you're like look guys this has happened fuck you all blah 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 then you're adding fuel to the fire and then everyone's going to be like, huh, what sex tape? Yeah, so I think that was the thing you. as you're well. You're in a catch-22 situation. I'm more annoyed mm-hmm. that you couldn't even monetize from it, really. I know, I made no money from it. I should have... What, what, what I would have done coin. now, I would have yeah. been like, right, this has happened damage control. How can we monetize off it? How can we do this? How can we, like, yeah. that's probably what I'd, I'd have been like. And guys, if you want part two, <laughs> yeah. come to me directly. <laughs> And yeah. just make light of it and be Probably like, that was the warm fans. up you should have seen in the fucking bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I wish really had only fans that I could have been fucking uploading it there, I making know. paper. Absolutely. I know. But yeah, it was. Um... I think it's, yeah, that's really, really intense. I think the toughest thing for me would be knowing I didn't do this on purpose and having to keep quiet. Or not even through the, because you wanted to keep quiet, you physically couldn't talk about it. It was too much to bear. Yeah. yeah it was so painful I just couldn't talk about it at all and it's like I'm really glad I can talk about it now and I was just saying to Holly like you know if I was meant to heal and get over it sooner I would have you mm. know like everything happens in life it just happens and I kind of just believe now that the path's already set out like if it's gonna come it's gonna come if it's not it's not like there's just no point worrying about stuff or stressing about it anymore because if it's gonna happen it will and so now it's like, because I sit here and I say this and I'm just like, oh my God, I've ruined so much of my life. <laughs> but they have to see the other side and be like, look, this has created who I am now and it, it had to happen this way and I have to come to terms and accept that. Mm-hmm. And I think in anything in life, you just have to like, come to terms and accept like, this is what happened and I'm, I made that choice. I did that. I was in that relationship. Can I ask, has that stopped you from like wanting to record future sex tapes with partners and stuff or mm. yeah, like... I've never made a sex tape again really? really yeah never I get that I would now okay now you're now. healed yeah now you're like, I know I've got to put my a game in at all times because you never know yes. or at least delete the shit ones <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah because I don't think obviously it, it has been so horrific and so traumatic for you so I totally understand if the answer would have been no but equally it's like you know if that's something you enjoy if that's something that gets you off why should you have to stop that mm. it's just being more mindful of do you know what this shit well i would never done one, one before right because okay. my whole thing was mm. i'd never do one unless i was married right so i was oh, really upset about that as well so it wasn't even a thing so that you'd already said no yeah so and this is the other thing you said no yeah i do think maybe the guy could have should have maybe got in trouble i didn't investigate that at the time because at the time i'm just like that was ah, not your kill priority. me now yeah, yeah. Um, but maybe actually thinking about it because it clearly I don't know this but someone said clearly I say no I don't in the don't record in the beginning right so So, luckily I mean you're in a good you've got a good relationship with that ex but I mean we never talk but like I never would like no but if you and obviously he didn't do it to be me he didn't release it yeah but if he Mm. did release it I would be going oh god oh Oh, yeah for real for real if that was that I, I mean, it's it's a weird one because since this has happened to you, um, there's now an actual thing come out. Uh, what's it called? The revenge porn. Revenge thing. porn. Like people can actually go to prison and stuff. Yeah, like, it's I know really it's serious. a hacker, so it's a bit of an unfortunate situation that we couldn't get him. But but um, maybe the police would have taken it seriously of a hacker. Maybe obviously back then they didn't. Mm-hmm. Maybe every, every you can find. Bring the police. Like, Someone's literally size six. Yeah. How long ago did the incident happen? Yeah, maybe we should try ring them now. That's what I'm saying. So say somebody's listening to this mm-hmm. and maybe it's not to the level of what's happened to you in terms of like an actual video. Maybe it could just be like pictures, pictures. that I've got out and, you know, they're really struggling. Like what would, I mean, you've given so many great tips throughout this, but what would you really advise or, yeah, what can you give to them to try and help them get through it? Well, I just think, first of all, 
you need to speak about it to people. If you really feel it's affecting you, you need to get it out and speak to as many people. Even if like you just have one friend and you're like, I'm sorry, but I need to speak about this until it's over. And I wish I just spoke to my boyfriend at a time for a whole year every single day. Like, because I feel like every day you're going to speak about it, the less and less it's going to happen. Mm. And just ask that person, like, will you be that person for me? You know, I need mm. to get this out. Um, that potentially. Um, and also just owning it. So like for one, if you are going to do videos of pictures, make sure they're 10 out of 10 and you really like them before anything We happens. said this in Taking the Perfect Nude. See, mm -hmm. she's here to give the good advice, but she's also here to warn you of the shit that can happen too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> when you don't know. Keep your nerves screwing up, obviously. Um, but yeah, just, um, you just got to, you've got to really come to terms with it as well and just be like, this has happened. And I think another thing is that you didn't even get it sent to you, which shocked me. So it's like, not everyone knows or has seen it or it's not as bad. And what's happened today is yesterday's news tomorrow. And it exactly. really is. Everyone else will carry on with their lives. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with that that pain and that torture. And all, I don't know, I guess I knew that. But deep down, I always think people think that when they first see me and they don't. No, it's no just one such, thinks yeah, that. It's people are so, so involved in their in own head. lives. Yeah. yeah, that like, they don't remember what you did a year ago or five years ago or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I think when people talk about me, they're like, oh, you know, the one that had the sex day. I oh think people God, say never. that. But I don't think anyone says that. But in wow. my head, I thought that's how people would be introducing me. No. So that's crazy, right? That is crazy. Mm. But then obviously you had no choice but to create these stories because you weren't talking to anyone. I think you'd be known as the toothpaste girl before the sex tape. Yeah. <laughs> the like the toothpaste girl. Or the page free girl. Like there's just so many um, other labels yeah. I've got that, yeah. But you create these crazy stories in your head. And I think that's my main thing is that like, speak about it, be open and just be aware. Like, okay, I'm creating a crazy story. Like mm. not everyone does know. And there's 7 billion people on this planet and you know, like you can get over it or you, I think you've got to know you can get past this. It's not going to last forever. But also I don't want to be that person that's like, you need to get over it because honestly, I couldn't for five years. It was mm -hmm. a long time and I had to go do plant medicines to finally get over it. Like imagine, yeah. went all the way to Peru to get rid of this one issue. Yeah. It's like crazy. So I don't know how else to give you advice because I guess mine was so traumatic and so really in no one's really experienced what i've experienced yeah, it's very extremely invasive isn't it yeah it's a very extreme version of like getting your privacy kind of out there but um yeah i think you've just really got to be open about it and just understand that you're creating the stories and that's not the truth and no matter what you do what decisions you make they're shitty or whatever even if you've killed someone that does not define you as a person yes you made shitty actions and you made a shitty decision at that time but that is not you as a person. You can change. Every second you can choose to change. You can embody a new version of you. That Your actions don't define you. And I think I took that on too much. Like, I'm now this person because of this. Mm. That's not you. You're amazing. You can achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. Like, my life now is flourishing beautifully. Like, there is so much greatness on the other side of the misery. But I think you've got to be willing to drive into the misery. You've got to look at the deepest, darkest places of yourself. Because the other side is heaven. But the side before that deep and dark misery is a misery prison you've mm. created. You've got to drive through it. And I mean, it's so hard. I can't tell you how hard it is, guys. How many times I've cried. How many times I've just like laid in bed all day and can't. Even being a mum, you're just like, mummy is just not good today, baby. Like, mummy needs a day to just rest. Yeah. Because I've got to be in bed all day. Like, I've had to have them days and get through. But the other side, I feel amazing. And I'm really happy. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> what a close. Um, Queen, is there anything you want to add? No. I just want to thank you because I know when we started the podcast, we were like, look, this is all about raw, real, vulnerable chats. And I think in terms of vulnerability, this is probably one of the most vulnerable chats it will ever be for you. Um, and it is bringing up a lot of trauma and pain and mm. stuff that you've healed from. So it's really brave of you to bring that when you've been working on that for the last like four or five years. Um, and I'm just really glad that you've actually been given the space to share your side because you are owed that. You were always deserving to have that that side, to have your voice. So yeah, I'm really proud of you. 
definitely doesn't define you. I definitely don't see you as the sex tape girl. I always see you as the whitening toothpaste girl in my heart. Thank you, babe. No, I'm the, now the knobber. The knobber. Yeah. You're the podcast girl now. Um, and yeah, I just hope that anybody that is listening to this, that maybe was a bit of a dick back in the day or was judgmental of you, that they just take a minute to, you know... Reflect on reflect your actions. And just yeah, think and I think that's the thing. Like The person on the end... It's like this Philip Schofield thing, right? Mm-hmm. We were just saying, it's all right for everyone to just have this media frenzy and attack and attack and give their opinion and be judgmental but you've got to think of the person on the end of this there is a human on the other end there's yeah. a human and like mm. if you'd have topped yourself lace there would n- no you'd never forgive yourselves would you so all those people would have blood on their hands and then they'd be the ones that sat at the back of the room in the funeral crying and showing their yeah. memories hashtag yeah. be hashtag kind hashtag memories hashtag be kind no fuck you motherfuckers yeah no it's so real and i'm really <laughs> glad you made that point for real like just be careful when mindful when you are about to judge someone or like or share shit that you know you shouldn't be like yeah, what the fuck like if I had received that or... just delete it yeah I would del- there's no way I'd start forward 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 it's fucked up it's just seen as fucking juicy gossip that's the yeah. problem and yeah like, and it's like so you boring. guys are literally getting a kick out of someone's fucking absolute misery right now and mm. like your opinion really doesn't mean shit but you're just making it worse for another person that's really suffering mm-hmm. and potentially is wanting to kill themselves yeah it's like let's just be kind and just try not to judge people like, i know it's hard i judge people all the time in my head mm. but it's like don't actively go out there and start keyboard worrying or feeling the need to message people and throw them under the bus like just what's the need? Mm. Do you know what? Just be like, look, you've done a shitty thing, but you're a human being and I'm just going to love you anyway because we're all brothers and sisters. We're all connected. And whenever I'm sending you hate, I'm getting hate back. So I'm just going to send you love even though you've done a shitty thing. Oh, yeah. If we could all live like that, the world would be such a beautiful place. Mm. Thanks. We're out. I feel so free. Yeah. Good for you, girl.